Welcome to the first episode of the Sino Show. And you probably want to know what exactly that is. So, let me explain. This is going to be a hopefully weekly video series where we're going to talk about the newest topics regarding alchemy stars and sometimes even maybe other things. And all of this in a less edited and also unscripted fashion. I'm also going to split up all the topics we're going to talk about into three segments so that we can get some more structure into this video. For the first episode, I only have three segments. News, which is pretty much self-explanatory, speculations, where I'm just going to ramble on with my theories and predictions and co. You know me. But I do have to say I have a pretty good track record so far, so hopefully I can keep that up. And last but not least, off topic. This is basically just going to be me talking about the future of the channel, planned projects, maybe things that I maybe want to do, and sometimes even answering questions from the last video. And now that the explanation is out of the way, let's jump straight into our first segment. News. And unfortunately, there isn't really any brand new news, so we have to make do with fairly recent topics. And there is definitely still one banner that I didn't talk about. And a lot of people do want my opinion on it. Yes, that's right. This week's RRR. And before I continue, I do have to be honest for a second here. Making rotating recruitment videos does get a bit repetitive. Especially if the banner is full of the usual. AKA Fortal Converters, Cross Converters, Double Chainers. You know them, you love them. But uh, that, it's a bit boring. I have to be blunt. So, in the future, if there's not really any interesting characters on the banner, I'm just going to not make a dedicated video for it, and instead cover it and make a quick rundown about it in this video series. So, the next time you don't see a rotating recruitment banner video, just be on the lookout for the next The Sino Show video. But enough talking. Let's talk about the rotating recruitment banner of this week, which contains the 6-star Migard and the 5-stars Klecken and Louise. Klecken is the usual Fortal Converter, but in this case for the water element. But there's actually one interesting thing about him. No, I'm not going to make a joke about his tentacles. Okay, the only thing I have to say is that he and Connolly definitely would be best friends. But what I actually meant is that his equipment does provide a fright debuff. And if you played the mini event we had before Aurora Eternal and or the advanced combat simulation in this event, then you might be familiar with the Awakened mode. This makes Eclipse sites a lot more annoying and harder to deal with. And there's basically only two ways to get rid of it. You either go full monkey mode and box your way through all the hordes of enemies with raw power, or you do it the intended way with special debuffs. In this case that are Paralyze, Stun and of course Fright. Which does mean that Klecken actually has a bit more use cases than a usual Fortal Converter would have. But in the end, that doesn't really matter, he's a Fortal Converter so he's core. He has the usual BTs. Like I always say, don't go for BT3, if you're close to MBT, just go for it. And that's basically everything you can say about Klecken. But there's one thing, one little thing. Don't forget who is coming real real soon, so you might not use Klecken in the future. So, let's switch over to our second patient, Louise, who is the forest double chain support. And there is two important things here, forest and double chain support. If you watched basically any RR, you already know what I'm going to say. Double chain supports are good for OTK, burst and co. And burst is actually quite useful not only for the usual boss fights and CC, but also sometimes in Elysium in really really hard content. But if you would ask me if this Red Riding Hood actually has anything special about her besides being a double chain support, I would probably even say maybe, because her equipment does give her a small heal whenever you enter Aurora time. 
and because she is a double chain support, which means she is going to be used in these OTK teams, you are going to enter Aurora time quite often. So you're actually going to make use of this heal, making her equipment at least somewhat useful. Besides that, she's forest. Of course, she's going to be probably the most staple out of all double chain supports because forest is just that strong. So you definitely want to have Louise to have the complete forest OTK package, so that also you can bring your grandma a cake. No, what I meant is so that also you can make your life just that much easier if you want. You can of course also go hard mode and go with fire or I guess the only hard mode on alchemy stars is really fire. Thunder has Requiem and Michael, Water has Bethlehem soon TM and Regal and Forest is Forest. Fire is just that kid that wanted a Nintendo Switch but got a GameCube instead for Christmas. And back to Louise. There is not much to say, she's the usual double chain support but she's a bit more important than the others because she is in the forest element which does have these really really strong damage heavy characters. So while I'm at it, you should probably also grab BT2 of Louise for that juicy preemptive strike because you know if you want to burst, you most likely want to do it directly on turn 1 which needs a MBT cross converter and a preemptive strike double chain support and most of the time you are going to borrow one of them. And getting the preemptive for the double chain support is a lot easier than the MBT for the cross converter. So while you're at it, just go for the guaranteed 5 star and hopefully grab that BT2 for Louise if you want to make the most out of your forest. And while I'm already talking so much about the best element in Alchemy Stars, I might as well switch over to our 6 star of this banner, Megard. She's not only an Illumina's number one pervert who is going to molest every petite girl on your colossus which is not exactly a pro, but she does have pretty big assets. No, of course I meant her low two turn cooldown teleport, because that's what she's all about. Even at the start of Alchemy Stars, she was actually one of the best characters, because in every team, even in rainbow teams, you could just utilize her for that sweet sweet low two turn cooldown teleport. Basically kind of making her the Swiss army knife of Alchemy Stars. And that did change, she is not as strong as before, but she is still really good for the forest element. She has really high stats, she has... you know what? And she has the teleport. And while I'm already rambling on about teleports, I might as well mention that she does have a fire sub element, which is pretty good because that just means you don't need any of the other ones and this makes her a fire teleporter. Anyway, Midgard is pretty strong. Luis is pretty strong, Glacken is a core character, at least for now until Bethlehem comes, and what else can I say? All of them have pretty solid BTs, you have Mikard with preemptive on BT3 which is definitely a nice pickup for a teleporter, you have the really important preemptive for Luis on BT2, and of course we can't forget about Kraken's MBT which does give you that plus one tile. So. What is my summarized opinion on this banner? Well, it's pretty easy. This is a really, really good banner. I would roll. At least roll for the guaranteed 5 star, because there's just so many good pickups. If you don't have any of those, you should throw some yellow flares at this, but don't spend any Lou member. There is Bethlehem coming and who, who knows what else. So better be prepared and only use your yellow flares on this banner. If you already have everything here then of course you don't need to roll, but else I would definitely suggest to try your luck on this banner. Everyone is pretty good, Mirgard is not a must have, but she is a really nice to have useful teleporter. And that's basically everything I had to say about this RR, so let's switch over to our second topic of the new segment which is the new event mode. I'm now quickly going to run down how this event mode works and then I'm going to follow it up with my personal opinion on this mode. The simulation mode allows you to get a random Super Mario block that basically contains a random surprise, which is not so random because it's basically predetermined. 
at least I think it is. And there's a couple of possible modes you can actually get. There's the usual standard fight, then there's the advanced fight, which is basically just the normal fight but with awakened eclipse lights. Of course, we can't forget about the arena mode we just had in the battle event, and also the survival mode that reminds a bit of the Dune Fire event mode. But that's still not it. Tortar graced us with some PTSD and reintroduced the chess enemies once again from Endgame. I don't think anyone wanted that, but sure, they are here, and then there's of course also a boss mode, where you're just going to fight off against a single enemy and maybe some ads. So what do I have to say about this? While getting all these different kind of modes is fun, it does get a bit repetitive if you do it for the third, fourth, fourth, fifth time. So even though there's technically enough creativity in there somewhere, it does feel really boring in the end. At least after like the first week. The first week is interesting enough, you play all modes a couple times, but then you just want to auto. And you don't even get punished for it, because you don't even need to do the hard mode. If you want all rewards, you can just auto normal. And I think that's pretty bad, as there should be some incentive to actually do some harder content. So I'm hope Turdok is going to work on that, because that problem was also present in the last few events with Dune Fire and also the Bethel event. They had the same problem. And speaking of the Bethel event, I definitely didn't want to see Arena back again. It was fun the first time we had it, but I already had my fair share of really overpowered AI for no reason killing me in two turns. So yeah, I'm definitely just going to auto that on normal. And that's pretty much all my thoughts on this event mode. The only thing I would add maybe is make the visuals a bit more interesting while this theme with question mark block is really interesting. I would have personally loved to see Turdok fully commit to the copyright infringement of Super Mario and maybe add some 2D levels with the navigator and at the end of the level you have this question mark block. I know that would have been very unnecessary and maybe even also boring, but yeah, that's just something I wanted to say. And with that, we're actually already done with the new segment. So let's move over to the probably a bit more interesting one. Speculations. If you look at the illustrations tab and then go to extra chapters, there's actually some new spaces that are empty for now with a question mark. So that probably means we are going to get a new extra chapter soon TM. So probably still before the end of the year because it already was added, at least these empty spaces, but what could it be about? As the new event is about probably Bethlehem and the Northlands, my best guess is that it's probably going to be the same thing. Maybe a prequel for the Bethlehem event we are going to get next week. We will see if I'm once again right, or if I'm failing miserably, which hopefully not, but we will see. And while I'm already at the topic of my predictions, let's take a look at the next banner which is obviously going to be Bethlehem, but there is one missing character, which is the chair dude. He's sitting in a chair, and that's pretty much it. We don't know anything about him, he's maybe from Lomopolis, and I didn't actually predict any classes or attributes for him. So I still need to do that before he actually gets revealed, so here we go. If we look at the past releases, he is probably not fire, he's probably not forest, and he's definitely not water because I doubt that they're going to do a double water or two water banners alongside each other. So he's probably going to be thunder, and I really hope that he is finally going to be the double chain support of the thunder element. But that's just hoping for the best. And obviously you're now going to say, but Sino, all the double chain supporters are 5 stars. And yes I know. And regarding that, I do have two theories. He's either going to be a 5 star, which would mean that Bethlehem actually is going to break the pattern of the two 6 star banners after the one 5 star, one 6 star one, which would maybe make sense, like I mentioned in my TGS video, she is special enough, this is half anniversary, so that's definitely a possibility. And the other theory, if he's actually a 6 star, he could still be a double chain support. Maybe they kept the double chain Aurorian for the thunder element behind curtains for so long because he's actually the first 6 star version. I mean that's definitely not out of the picture because we do already have 5 star versions of 4 star converters and vice versa also 6 stars. 
So the same thing could definitely happen to double chain supports, which would in turn mean that he probably would have a 100% scaling for his active instead of just the 85. But that's just wishful thinking and probably wrong. I have a feeling that he might just be a 5 star. He doesn't seem too important and there is one big thing that you need to consider if you look at this banner. If you try to see the situation from Turidok's position, you know that everyone and their mother is saving for Bethlehem and is also probably going to spend on them if they have to, and also her BTs, so why would they roll for this dude in a chair? There could only be one reason if he's really a 6 star, and that would be if he's absolutely broken, which would make sense if he's a 6 star double chain support, which is very unlikely. And I think there's a good chance that he's going to end up being a 5 star, with Bethlehem being a really special banner, and maybe even some special banners alongside it. Maybe something along the lines of the 4 element attribute choosing thing we had recently. And that's basically everything I had to say about the future banner. There is actually one more thing that I want to mention regarding this whole topic of the next event and the end of December. I'm really hoping that Turidoc is going to make something big out of this half anniversary we are going to have pretty soon. I think it's uh, around the 15th December or something. So yeah, hopefully Tencent and Turidoc are going to make maybe a live stream, make a big thing out of it, get more players, get everyone hyped up. So I especially want to see a live stream, because speaking of live stream, let's move over to our last segment. Off topic. Because I do want to live stream. But not just anything. If we actually get a half anniversary livestream, it doesn't matter if it's JP only or not, I'm 100% doing a livestream watch party with all of you guys, and I hope if this is going to turn out true, that you guys are going to be present when the time is here. And even if not, I'm planning on doing a live stream when the next event hits, the Bethlehem event. I'm going to stream my roles for Bethlehem and Chair Dude. We are going to look at all the intricacies of these characters, we are going to test them, we are going to level them up, we are going to do all these naughty things to them. So make sure to be there. It's probably going to be the 23rd, we don't know yet, but when the time comes I'm definitely going to make an announcement. And with that, we're already done. The last thing I do want to say before I'm ending this first episode of this I know show is I'm grateful for almost 1.7k subscribers and I really hope that we can actually hit 2k before the end of the year because there's some things I've planned like for example a discord server for that occasion. So we will see, hopefully that's going to happen, hopefully the live stream is going to happen, we will see. And that was all from me, have a nice day and see you next time.